This evening, we will honor 10 new members of the Hall of Fame who have made significant contributions to education. The U Pike Educators Hall of Fame was established to honor leaders in the field of education and those who are advocates for education. Our efforts are intended to serve as an inspiration for the next generation of teachers and leaders. Induction into the Hall of Fame acknowledges that those men and women have made distinguished careers in the field of education. And we welcome them and thank them for their contributions that they have made to our region and our community. Please welcome Governor Paul Patton, our interim president and chancellor at the University of Pike. Thank you, Aaron, and let me welcome you to the campus of the University of Pikeville and congratulate you. You've been recognized by the committee for your outstanding contributions to the field of education. You know, when you really think about what, what an education does for an individual, to, to be a part of giving that, that gift of knowledge, that gift of, of inquisi inquisitiveness and, and uh, the things that education brings, it really, it really brings a warm feeling to a person. It's important. I've been blessed. I've had great opportunities to do a lot of things, but I can honestly say that nothing that I've done in my life has meant more to me than my time spent on the hill at the University of Pikeville. Because I can see every day the young people that come in here and both those that stay a year, uh, four years and you get to know, it, it's, it's amazing. They, 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 they blossom. They change. They grow up. They mature. And to just be a little part of that is certainly a great pleasure to me. And I know that all of you who are personally involved in education and all of those, you who are supporters of education uh, understand that and feel uh, that way. These 10 individuals have been selected by the committee uh, based on their uh, contribution to the field of education. But we think that in the big picture, our ceremony tonight honors not only these 10 individuals, but all that who are engaged in the profession. Because our whole way of life depends upon our education establishment. A Chinese philosopher once observed that civilization is only one generation deep. If any generation fails to pass along the accumulated knowledge and, and to add to that body of knowledge to the next generation, the society will fail and disappear. And that has happened over time of history in many places in the world. So what we are engaged in is, as educators is no doubt the most important job in Kentucky. As a body, as a body, those engaged in education have the most important job in Kentucky. More important than the governor, more important than our senators, more important than our local officials. Because in, 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 in America, the primary responsibility for education <coughs> lies with the states. And so those people that have been engaged on the local level and the state level uh, in promoted education uh, are doing, in my opinion, the most important job in our society. So I offer my congratulations and thanks to the Academy as a whole and to these individuals uh, personally. Congratulations. Thank you. Danny Adams devoted 33 years of professional service to education as a classroom teacher and as a high school basketball coach. An alumnus of Piper College, Adams earned his bachelor's degree in 1971 and completed graduate work at Moorhead State University. After spending one year as a teacher and assistant coach, he returned to Piper College where he served as admissions counselor, director of admissions and financial aid and assistant basketball coach. Followed that with three years 
at Pikeville High School before returning to his native McGolfin County High School, where he taught and coached until his retirement in 2004. Adams has been recognized for his time on the court, both as a player and as a coach. As a student athlete, he was named all KIAC team member, MVP of the Pikeville College basketball team, and among the outstanding college athletes of America. His coaching honors include multiple honors, including induction in the UPike Athletics Hall of Fame and the Kentucky Association of Basketball Coaches Court of Honor. Honored as an outstanding teacher at McGolfin County High School, Adams is a member of the Kentucky Education Association, the Kentucky Retired Teachers Association, the Kentucky Association of Basketball Coaches, and he is an active board member for the University of Pikeville Alumni Association. Adams and his late wife, Rebecca, have three children and four grandchildren. Congratulations, Danny Adams. Thank you, Dr. Roberts, Dr. Pat, members of the board, all the people that nominated me and the Distinguished Educators Selection Committee that selected me among this illustrious group. Uh, I was honored, um, as Howard said there in the bio in 94, to be inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame at UPI. And I kind of feel like uh, Louis Dampier felt, if you all uh, heard him, when he was inducted uh, into the Hall of Fame with Coach Calipari this summer. He talked about how these other players were so much greater and the notoriety was so much greater. And I actually felt that way when I went into the Athletics Hall of Fame and certainly the Educational Hall of Fame, at the, for sure the Distinguished Educators Hall of Fame, but also in staying with Dampier's, uh, to paraphrase what he said, uh, I'm in and I'm keeping. <laughs> uh, one of my kids, Hester, here, and uh, the boss, Dawson, y'all stand up. Stand up, Hester, Dawson. Jackie, special friend Jackie, stand, please. Thank you all. Another daughter lives in New York. Obviously, she couldn't get here, and a son that's in law enforcement, and he's on duty now. Um, I want to thank all the former colleagues that are here, friends, fellow educators, coaches, players, and any students, man, and also a fellow alumni board member. Bible College has always been a special place for me. I uh, met my wife here, made a lifelong, made lifelong friends, played college basketball, and got a good education. You know, when I first came here, I wasn't prepared. And my GPA showed it. <laughs> uh, an analysis said it was anemic at best and ready be, to be admitted to the critical care unit. <laughs> I sat out a semester, came back, had grown, had gotten uh, uh, stronger, and had actually grown four inches, and had grown mainly up here. But still, when it came back, I needed direction. I needed direction. I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to get an education. That semester I was off, I worked in Michigan in a truck plant, made good money, but I still missed the part. I wanted to get that education. I was encouraged by my parents to do so, but again, I needed direction. Many special people, I cannot name them all. Just, just some, uh, when I came here and helped out President Kofi as president at the time, Redford Dameron, Charlie Francis, uh, Dale and Martha McNeely, Ronnie and Marita Thompson, Paul Butcher, Stella Elkin, John Waddell, Dr. Dutch Struck. I'll always remember one thing Dr. Struck said in the educational classes. Had uh, four classes under him. He said, never go into a classroom as an instructor un or ill prepared. And he lived by that. He lived by that because in the classes, in the classes Dr. Strzok taught, he told us that you come prepared and 
You'd better because a lot of times he'd come in and say, okay, today, Mr. Adams, you're going to be the instructor. I'll be your resource person. And you better be prepared. You better be prepared. But I thank all those people. Education, as Governor Patton said here, this institution, and I'm referring to Piper College and you UPAC uh, together, obviously, this institution, what makes any institution are the people. The administrative personnel, the teachers, the people down in the trenches, the kids. Because I I was not a self-made man. Okay? I needed help from a lot of areas. What's that saying about a self-made man? You know, you know, that certainly relieves the Almighty of the great responsibility. The people say they're self-made men and had no help. I had a lot of help from a lot of these people in a lot of ways. I had great experience here. I got to play basketball. I managed to get a basketball scholarship. I got to travel to Mexico, to Canada, to Poland. I got to work with the great people in the administration part of it. I got uh, four years of coaching experience under Wayne Martin, one of the greatest fundamental teachers and organizational people I've ever met. We had great players at that time. We had great kids. On that very much like what's going on here, there's a lot of excitement back then. Uh, I managed, I went on to, uh, after my stand here at the college, I went to Pikeville High School three years again, find people there, John Waddell, Tom Swartz, uh, Mr. Sowers, uh, brought in Roy Cut right as the assistant coach there, then went to McGoffin County and finished out the coaching career. And again, wonderful people, Wonderful people, Mr. Whitaker, the superintendent, uh, Mr. Gullick, the principal, Ronnie Gullick, and A.B. Conley, uh, director of vocational technical school, and had been the coach previous. They made my transition much easier, as did Coach Cecil and Coach Patrick that came in to help me. And uh, Jerry Patrick later on came in, and various other people that actually played under us managed to come in and uh, were assistant coaches. I put coaching and teaching in the same thing. I'm converting a lot of these stories to coaching, but teaching classroom, you're talking about the same thing. You teach on the court. You'd better teach on the court. And I think we've got a person up here, and actually a couple people up here now, uh, Coach McNamee and the ladies, and of course Coach Wells, that are living, living proof of that. But, uh, you know, it's good to have great people around you. It's good to have great people around, and I've been blessed. And Coach, I'm reminded of Coach Patrick, uh, uh, David Patrick, and Coach Don Cecil. Uh, we were coming into New Year's. We had a big tournament right after New Year's. We were practicing New Year's Eve. We practiced that afternoon. Well, the kids we knew they we wanted them to have a little fun, go out for a while, but uh, we wanted them to make sure they were safe when they were out. You know what I'm talking about. So we didn't put any curfew on. We usually did, but we didn't that night. But before they left, we told them we had a 7 a.m. practice the next morning. And we did. And I'll never forget Coach Cecil and Coach Patrick walking around. Hey, what's Jonathan Central and Pansville doing right now? They're sleeping. We're getting better, okay? Well, they got some frowns out of that. But we had some, had some great, great, great time. You know, teaching and coaching, oftentimes, you don't get the end result that you would like. But you can't be disappointed to the point where you forget about the positives that you've accomplished. Because every day, these kids are learning something. Every day they're learning something. I, I look at a situation here, I'm reminded of one where uh, a person probably got a little overly disappointed, and sometimes we express that, and maybe the disappointment outweighs the positive progress. Former Southern Cal coach John McKay, he came in to Tampa Bay on the expansion of the NFL. He went about two years, didn't win a, didn't win a game. And one night they'd got to be like 42 to three and the press was asking him questions. They said, coach, uh, what do you think about your team's execution tonight? He said, I'm all for it. <laughs> so that's taking it a little bit too far. But teaching and coaching the career, I taught 26 years and I taught. I had a full load. I didn't have a large line off. I was department chair for a few years as well, but I enjoyed that. In the class, out of the class, I put it in the same context. I put it in the same context. 
but uh, good educators make positive differences in children's lives every day, every day. You pack, we're the leading educational institution in Central Appalachia, and we're growing, and we're getting better each day. Thanks to the leadership, Governor Patton, administrative personnel, the faculty, staff, all of them, down in the trenches, getting after it, making the world a little bit better. One graduate at a time. <clears throat> we look at our medical school. We look at the school of optometry that's being built. College of Business, our arts and sciences, athletics, great programs, great opportunity, great students, equal great success. Thank you all very much for this honor. For the past 16 years, Anita Bolt has taught kindergarten at Jenkins Elementary. She began her teaching career in the first grade classroom before implementing Project READ, where she taught first through third grade students who were identified as those needing intervention in reading. Bolt earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Virginia's College of Wise and a master's degree in education from Moorhead State University. She was named Jenkins Independent Teacher of the Year and is a member of the Kentucky Education Association and the National Education Association. An active member of the Jenkins Christian Church, she devotes much time and talent to the church choir and has directed numerous Christmas and Easter cantatas. Together with their blended families, she and her husband Ron have five children and 11 grandchildren. A respected teacher, Bolt's classroom is magical as five-year-old students follow procedures, use manipulatives, achieve high expectations, and experience fun while learning. Congratulations, Anita Bolt. that I 
I go to work. I walk into that classroom, and I have five and six-year-old children, and they're so eager to learn, and they have smiles on their face, and they're curious and inquisitive, and I think I have the best job in the whole school because I don't think at any other age you see so much growth, and it is so rewarding, so I feel so truly blessed to have been able to do what I have done for the past 30 years. And I'm thankful I didn't retire. I almost did. I almost did. So I'm glad I did. But I also want to take the time to thank parents. You know, they entrusted me over the years to teach their most precious possession. And I thank them for that. But also I want to thank my students. You know, I once had a shirt that said, to teach is to touch a life forever. Well, that's very true, and I hope I have positively had an impact on all the students that I have taught in the 30 years that I have been there. But let me say this, it goes the other way too. It works the other way because those precious students have so deeply touched my heart, and I feel so truly blessed. Uh, to finish up, I, if I could, I would like to read this poem by Leah Betts. I carry it with me everywhere. It was given to me a few years ago. It stays in my wallet, and it all constantly reminds me of the awesome responsibility that we have as teachers. And it's called, many of you may know it, it's called the Star Polisher. I have a great job in the universe of occupation. What do I do? I'm a star polisher. It's a very important job. If you want to know just how important, Go out at night and look at the stars twinkling and sparkling. You see, I'm a teacher. The stars are the children in my class. And my job is to take them in whatever shape they come and shine and buff them and then send them out to take their places as bright, twinkling beacons in the sky. They come into my room in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're bent, tarnished, dirty, crinkly, or broken. Some stars are cuddly and soft. Some are prickly and thorny. As I buff and polish, I train and teach my little stars. I tell them that the world cannot do without them. I tell them they can do anything they set their minds to do. I tell them they can be the brightest, shiniest stars in the sky, and the world will be a better place because of them. Each night as I look at the sky, I'm reminded of my very important job and also responsibility. Then I get my soft buffing cloth and my bottle of polish in preparation for tomorrow for my class of little stars. Thank you. Jacqueline Dameron is a teacher at Mullins Elementary and has been employed in the Pike County school system for 25 years. Much of her career has been devoted to teaching primary and intermediate math. She currently teaches math in the elementary level. Dameron earned the bachelor's degree from Pikeville College in elementary education and a master's degree from Moorhead State University. She also received a rank one from the Kentucky Department of Education and was the first person in Eastern Kentucky to obtain this certification through the development of a portfolio investigating the correlation between reading and math. She served as a resource teacher for new teachers as well as a resource teacher for teacher candidates at UPike and Moorhead State University. She is a member of school and district task force teams, school and district professional development presenter, a Title I regional presenter, instructional transformational teacher leader, school leadership team, site-based council, school and district mentorship program, KVEC committee member, and has helped develop common core math standards. She has also been involved in district improvement plans and a collaborative team and presenter who initiated the Reflex math program. 
She's the recipient of the Teacher of the Week Award by the Pike County School System and a member of the Fitzpatrick Baptist Church where she teaches children's church and nursery. She is married to Greg Dameron and they are the parents of three daughters, Whitney, Haley, and Shelby. Hearing all that just makes me tired just listening, but <laughs> I'm both honored and humbled to be one of the 10 selected to receive the Distinguished Educator Award. I want to thank the selection committee, but I most importantly want to thank Dr. Newsel, who has always encouraged me, believed in me, and guided me on both a personal and professional level. She will never, ever know how dear she is to me, and I trust that about <laughs> I received my elementary education degree here from Piper College, as he said, many years ago, and have thoroughly enjoyed being a resource teacher to many UPIC future candidates who continually each year to exceed my expectations. I'm blessed also to have a cheering section if you would stand, please. <laughs> now. <laughs> I want to thank them for listening to me endlessly talk about education, uh, or at least being good pretenders. I want to end by sharing a favorite quote that sums up how I feel about teaching. Every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. Thank you. Dr. Jeff Hawkins has served our region in public education as a teacher, coach, building and district administrator, Kentucky Department of Education Re Regional Service Center Consultant, and director of multiple KDE statewide initiatives for 26 years. Hawkins has been recognized as one of Kentucky's first distinguished educators and is the co-founder of Appalachia Media Institute in Whitesboro. Currently, he is the director for the Kentucky Valley Education Cooperative, known as KVEC, which serves 19 public school systems in Eastern Kentucky. This initiative has grown from nine public school districts to 19 districts, and now serves 45,000 students and 2,800 educators. Through his leadership, KVEC has been recognized as one of the highest performing educational service agencies in the country and has been awarded both a U.S. Department of Education Investing in Innovation Award and a coveted Race to the Top District Award. Hawkins is the recipient of the Kelly Leadership Award in Literacy, the Mid-South Educational Research Association Award, JC's Young Man of the Year, Kentucky Virginia Commonwealth Teacher of the Year, and the Clinton Coming Up Higher Award. Hawkins devotes a great deal of time serving many agencies of education, and he is also serving on the advisory board to the University of Pikeville Patton College of Education. Dr. Hawkins earned a bachelor's degree in business administration from Georgetown College, a bachelor's degree in English from the University of Virginia's College at Wise, and a master's degree in education and doctorate in educational leadership from Moorhead State University. Hawkins and his wife have two children who are both teachers. Congratulations, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Um, it's a little bit strange to have to sit there and listen to someone read that uh, bit of information. I don't know if the rest of y'all feel that way or not, but um, wherever Teresa Lockhart is, I need to figure out who sent that stuff in. They must have uh, pulled everything on my resume. Um, but thank you. This is a very humbling um, opportunity uh, to be recognized along with the rest of the folks here tonight and those who have came before us and those who will come after. Um, being an educator is the most rewarding vocation that I could ever hope to have. And 
I know my colleagues across this region feel the same way. Um, I also did not prepare any remarks, luckily for you, uh, but I do want to leave you with three pieces of information. Um, our region has often taken a knock um, because some folks have a perception about us and the way we teach children that is just not true. I work in districts every day and I see great teachers, like some who have been with us already tonight, serving kids in powerful, creative, innovative ways every day. They change the lives of children. I know that the data tells us now that we have a higher rate of graduation than the rest of the state in our region. We are outpacing the state in the way that we grow our graduates. We have a higher college and career readiness rate for our graduates than the rest of the state. We are outpacing that growth for all of them. And if any of you have a free day tomorrow, I want to invite you to an event at the Expo Center where you'll be able to see hundreds of innovative teachers and hundreds of innovative students all day long demonstrating true innovation and creativity that takes place in our classrooms every day. We have about 600 people who will be there, and you have my personal invitation, free to come. We have breakfast, we have lunch, we have marvelous opportunities to learn and see what kids and teachers are doing every day tomorrow. So if you get a chance, or if you have a free day, come and spend it wisely, you'll be blessed. Thank you all, and thank the University of Pike. You Pike. Many children in Pikeville and in the region have been influenced by the work and love of Delphi Ann Lockhart. Mrs. Lockhart created and directed the Model City Daycare Center in Pikeville for 19 years prior to entering the public education system where she taught at Pikeville Elementary School for 23 years and retired in 2015. She earned her bachelor's degree from Pikeville College and a master's degree in education from Moorhead State University. Mrs. Lockhart is a member of the Pikeville United Methodist Church and is involved in many church and civic activities. Currently, she is enjoying entrepreneurship. She is the co-owner of Above and Beyond, an event planning business and gift shop in Pikeville. She is a valued member of this community and has advocated for many years in the field of early childhood education and development. She and her husband, Howard, have four children and 10 grandchildren. A colleague of hers states that when observing her classroom, it was evident to watch a master at work. The students were mesmerized by her, as were her colleagues. She always had high expectations for herself and those around her. Congratulations, Delphi Ann Locker. I did not prepare any speech. I just want to say thank you to the University of Pikeville and to all the parents of those children that I've had the opportunity to teach. I've had Governor Patton's grandchildren. I've had uh, uh, just numbers of children in my classroom. And this is a, is a real uh, opportunity. I just say education is so important. And I always had high expectations for myself and for every student in my class. Um, I want them to turn out to be uh, individuals who will, be, will contribute to society and take their, be responsible citizens. And I always felt that it was my job to be the model for, the, for them. So I want to say thank you. And if my family would stand. And Ron and Mary, along with so, I would just would like to just say this is a real honor.
For 25 years, Dr. William Loftus has taught psychology <coughs> at Big Sandy Community and Technical College. Additionally, he has served as an advisor and mentor for Phi Theta Kappa, a prestigious honor society for students at two-year institutions. Loftus has received numerous awards for his innovative teaching, including the Kentucky Colleges and Universities ACORN Award for Faculty Excellence. He received his bachelor's and master's degrees from Loras College in Iowa and his doctoral degree in adult education from Florida State University. Dr. Loftus and his wife, Teresa, have one son, Phelan. Congratulations. I, like everybody else, want to thank everybody who allows us to be here tonight. And those who, somebody said that, who will be here after us. Um, I don't usually, I'm a servant, so I don't usually like talking like this. Um, so I'm going to read. In my life, I have been a very lucky man to have had two great loves. One sits in the audience tonight. I once wrote in my teaching philosophy that teaching is rooted in the art of revealing an individual's aspirations by creating the respect and trust that they can be achieved. Creating a learning environment tasks the teacher to provide the means of binding these potentials together in a fabric of learning and interdependence, which at base level becomes community. And service to that community becomes a sacred act of social procreation. And I've been blessed to share in this creative act and its consequences within individual lives one at a time, year after year, for 26 years at Prestonsburg Community College and now Big Sandy Community and Technical College, as well as in my 20 years at Phi Theta Kappa, the two-year honor society. Always as a servant, not a leader, always as a mentor, not a teacher. Therefore, I humbly and kindly thank the University of Pikeville for this Distinguished Educator Award and for all the professional practice that I've done and will continue to do is nothing more than a wonderful love story. Amen. Gene Lovell came to Pikeville in 1982 after teaching at Southern Illinois Edwardsville and Benedictine College in Kansas. He had also served as the Associate Director of the Kansas Energy Office. For 30 years, he provided dedicated service to Pikeville College and the University of Pikeville as a Professor of Economics, Chairman of the Division of Social Science and Business, Chairman of the Academic Affairs Committee, acting registrar, and faculty athletics representative. Those who studied economics, money and banking, or quantitative methods under Mr. Lovell recall his use of fuzzy dice to teach a lesson in economics. He's still well known for those fuzzy dice. His wit is fondly recalled and quoted by many of us on this campus. Gene Lovell earned his Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in economics and a minor in mathematics and statistics from Oklahoma State University <coughs> and a master's degree in economics from the University of Chicago. He has received numerous awards, including the Walker Teaching Excellence Award from UPike and the William B. and Eloise Sturgill Distinguished Professorship and the Gary Thrash Outstanding Ambassador. He was also inducted into UPike's Athletic Hall of Fame for his service to our student athletes. He is a professor emeritus at the University of Pikeville and is enjoying retirement while being actively involved in University of Pikeville athletics. Gene Lowe. A few days ago, I got a phone call from David Barnett. And it's amazing how wonderful it made me feel. Uh, I reflect back on my students and forgive the term warm fuzzies. It's hard to get more warm fuzzies than when one of your former students 
gives you a compliment. Uh, just the other day, a student said, you were tough, but there's no use going through a class that you can just skate through. It's worthwhile to be challenged. I, having been here for 30 years, I think I'll demonstrate the concept of revealed preference. Economists use revealed preferences. Don't ask people what they do or what they feel or how they think. Watch what they do. Reveal their preference. And I've been here at Pikeville 30 years as a faculty member. I love Pikeville. I love Pikeville College and University of Pikeville. I've attended similar presentations to this. And again, warm fuzzies, people in the audience would like to be recognized. And forgive me if I leave out anyone, but I have all sorts of friends here. Paul Patton, David Barnett, Stephanie Steltner, Tom Hess, Bill Baird, Pay Baird, Perry Coleman, Linda New Zeal, Susan Lockhart, Thank you. It's amazing to me how we tend to forget how things happen. Do we really understand how much went in to having this tonight? As a faculty member, I had support from the staff, from the administration, from the board, and so on. And I certainly appreciate that. I couldn't have done my job without their assistance and their support. Some years ago, Pablo College had a motto, it's all about the students. We still live by that. The students are the most important thing here. We have all sorts of other activities going on, but it's the students. When I taught, I wanted students who were capable and motivated. And that motivation can come from various sources. I had a non-traditional student come up after class and she said, it was a young lady, she went home and told her young son, he's talking over my head. And her young said, said mommy, do this. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. We want to challenge our students to reach up and get it. Oh, I forgot, excuse me, Howard. And Judy, uh, Howard and I and Danny have a commonality of all being in the Hall of Fame, and we've been up here before, and both of them were very pleasant evenings. Thank you very much. think a person who's a dean and a former chairman would have a chair. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy Davis Thompson received her bachelor's degree in music education from Pikeville College and her master's degree from Moorhead State University. Her passion for music became a career that spanned three decades as a music educator in Pike County. She taught at Johns Creek School and Pike County Central High School before retiring in 2013. Betsy is a member of the Kentucky Music Educators Association, Music Educators National Conference, and the Kentucky Teachers Retirement Association. She has been recognized numerous times for her excellence in the classroom and as evidenced as being the recipient of the Ashland Incorporated Teacher Achievement Award and the KMEA 25 Year Service Award. She was also named Pike County Middle School Teacher of the Year and the KMEA District 9 Sec Secondary Teacher of the Year. Her choral students performed at Carnegie Hall for the Kentucky Legislature, at the Boys Sweet 16 Basketball Tournament at Ruff Arena, KMEA conferences, and countless school performances. Betsy and her husband, Tommy, have four children. Congratulations, Betsy Thompson.
knee replacement surgery. So anyway, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I would like to thank the selection committee that gave me this honor. It's truly been, as the other folks have said, um, a love song. Teaching, teaching in areas that they don't understand what choral music is and knowing that they have just as much talent as any place else in the world. I thank Pikeville College. I love Pikeville College. I would encourage anyone to come to Pikeville College. It has given me so many opportunities to hone my craft. And I've had so many wonderful, wonderful teachers, very talented and very dedicated to music and the choral program during my time. So thank you very much. I appreciate Lois Combs Weinberg is currently the executive director of IDEA, Center for Excellence, a nonprofit organization that works with families and children with dyslexic characteristics and provides professional development programs for teachers and school administrators. Her interest in dyslexia began with the birth of her first son, and after his diagnosis, she realized there were no programs in the public schools to meet her son's educational needs. She, with a group of four others, began tutoring at the Heinemann Settlement School in Knott County, an effort which led to the establishment of the James Steele Learning Center and has helped thousands of students and their families since then. She is also a senior consultant for the Carnegie Idea Academy in Lexington. She has been appointed to, to numerous statewide educational initiatives and in 1990 was selected to serve as chair of the prestigious Pritchard Committee for Academic Excellence after serving on the committee since it began in 1980. She currently serves on the Achievement Gap Study Group sponsored by the Pritchard Committee and was appointed by Governor Brereton Jones to the University of Kentucky's Board of Trustees in 1992. In 1997, at Governor Paul Patton's request, she accepted a seat on the newly created Council on Post-Secondary Education, where she has served as vice chair. Her awards are numerous, but her contributions to education and her advocacy remain strong. In 1986, she was named by the State Department of Education as one of the state's 10 outstanding school volunteers and named Person of the Year in Knott County. The Lexington Women's Center recognized her contributions in 1995. She was presented the Earl Wallace Memorial Award and Moorhead State University's Appalachian Woman of the Year Award in 2000. In 2013, she was honored by Women Leading Kentucky and received the Distinguished Alumni Award from her alma mater, Randolph College. Mrs. Weinberg and her husband Bill have three sons and a grandchild. She also attended Harvard University School of Education where she received a master's degree in education. Congratulations to Lois Combs Weinberg. Well, it's with humility and gratitude that I come tonight and accept this recognition because I really think it's a recognition not of what I've been able to do, which is a drop in the bucket, but of those that I represent, the children and the families, um, and that I advocate for. Those who learn differently, those who struggle to read, those who don't quite fit in every classroom. I have to tell you that one of my first students was Governor Paul Patton. 
He came to the Heinemann Settlement School in about 1986, give or take a year, and I tutored him because he was learning how to tutor an employee of his at the county courthouse. He was county judge executive at that time, and he was concerned about this gentleman because he wanted to learn to read, and Governor Patton didn't know what to do. So uh, we, we began that journey, and I'm not sure what the outcome was, but the journey is worth it all. Um, my greatest contribution to the University of Pikeville is the son that you heard about. Our firstborn did struggle in school, and he struggled all the way through. Uh, he went to Big Sandy and got some good guidance and ended up at the University of Pikeville, majoring, much to our amazement, in business and accounting, since this was the kid who couldn't do long division in sixth grade. However, um, he graduated from UPike and is a um, successful entrepreneur. So we're so happy uh, that UPike was here to serve his academic needs. But I come tonight because there's still an urgency. As much progress as we've made, as much excellent instruction as is represented here tonight, there is an achievement gap that has been documented and it's the children, low-income children, children with learning disabilities or learning differences, it's African-American children, and we know that that group, and through the testing that has been in, uh, implemented, that this is the group that's not making progress, and we have to dig a little deeper, look a little closer, and make sure that what we do is innovative and more project read classrooms like Mrs. Bolt's, uh, more individual attention from kindergarten from preschool on. And this group can excel just as well as the rest of our children. So tonight, I urge you to join me and to celebrate our children. I have to tell you a story about the little boy last night. And we still have a, an after school program that parents run in Floyd County. This is why I keep doing this. He's seven years old. He's cute as a button. His name is Jackson. And we're working hard as we can work. But he knows he has 10 seconds that he can get a question out. And he said to me, how do you like my new haircut? And I said, oh gosh, it's great. It's so mod. He said, today it drove the girls crazy. <laughs> so not only do I get to tell my own grandchildren stories, but I have more that, um, that come along my path, which is um, such a blessing. So thank you for all you do. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, let's just keep at it. Rosa Wolf has served as a teacher in Pike County for 65 years. Her career began in 1951 as a teacher at South Williamson Grade School. She taught at several schools before serving as guidance counselor, principal, and a GED instructor. She has also served as an adjunct professor at Pikeville College and Southern West Virginia Community College. A lifelong learner, she earned her associate's degree from Pikeville Junior College and her bachelor's degree and three master's degrees and a rank one from Moorhead State University. That certainly qualifies as a lifelong learner. She is a leader in rural education. and She wholeheartedly supported field trips that took students from this area to larger areas such as New York City and Washington, D.C. Early on, she chose to implement technology in the classroom, even when it meant securing private donations to obtain the computers that she wanted in her classroom in 1980. She served as principal of Hardy Grade School in 1963 during desegregation and was selected to participate in a summer program that integrated faculty at a school in Charleston, South Carolina, where white teachers were integrated into a black school. 
During these times of racial tension, she earned the trust of South Carolina elementary and high school students as they selected her to be their mediator in school administration. Although she has served for 65 years, she has now retired and she plans to continue to volunteer in the Pike County school system. Congratulations to Rosa Ward. Been a journey, but a happy one. Uh, I came from a family who really stressed the value of an education. There were six children in the family, and five of the six went to college. And I um, came to Pikeville Junior College, and I have gotten something from Pikeville Junior College. Pikeville College now is probably a sort of eventually. But anyway, we, we, uh, the values that uh, were instilled in us when I was a student here uh, always stayed with me. Uh, the faculty, everybody was interested in uh, all the students. You were on a first name basis with them. And uh, I really love kids. And that's why I went into education. And I have never lost focus of that. And I uh, I've been retired 27 days as of today, <laughs> and I miss it so much. <laughs> and I'd like to introduce someone tonight. Uh, first of all, my daughter, Beth Ann. I think she, you may stand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she ever forgave me for this or not, but she said, Mom, why do you have to be the first one at school and the last one to leave? <laughs> but I, I think eventually she will do that. Also, to this evening, I'd like to recognize I have so many right hands, <laughs> and uh, I miss them so much. Bob Thompson, I have been, was principal at North Point Academy, and uh, I retired as effective October 1st. Mr. Thompson, would you stand? You're my counselor, and I love you dearly. Okay. <laughs> and then another right arm is Rick Branham. I don't care what you ask him to do, he does. <laughs> and Troy Stroud, uh, when I was principal at Runyon Elementary School, he came to us. Uh, visit me one day in the summer and he was looking for a job. I've often asked him if he didn't regret having stopped that day. <laughs> because I haven't let him go. He's so uh, talented in anything you will ask to do and he'll stop by and hit work with me at night at, at North Point. And uh, technology, gee, he's a whiz at that, okay. And then he has his wife with him tonight, Jessica. Is she? Jessica? All right, okay. But uh, I can't wait to get back to January so I can start again. <laughs> They're making me stay off 90 days. But anyway, um, I have had a long, interesting life and I wouldn't change it for anything. And um, Mr. Patton, you might want to hear this. I was counselor at Belton High School for a number of years. And I think I was sort of, They worked so well with me all the, uh, uh, the admissions officers and, uh, and uh, financial aid personnel, and they always came to see me. They came to me and came and we would have a chance to sit there and get to. And uh, I was always partial to Pikeville College. Uh, so, uh, so that's it. So I'm, I never thought that I would ever be here tonight receiving an award. <laughs> okay. That did not occur to me. but. Um, I just uh, want to thank everybody for the opportunities that I have had. I have truly been blessed. And um, I, I just, that's all I can say. I have been blessed. And I thank you so much.
Well, thank you all for being here this evening, and again, uh, congratulations and thanks to our honorees for their service to our region. I want to acknowledge the presence of some of our trustees, Bill Baird, uh, along and serve with uh, uh, Don Cecil, that's our trustee, Ron McCoy, uh, and I think that's all the trustees that are here. I want to acknowledge the presence of our partner in education, Dr. Devin Stevenson, from uh, the Prestonburg, a uh, big Sandy community and technical college. Uh, uh, you know, there's more work up here to do than we can all get to you know, we get done and working together, we'll get a lot more done. So again, uh, education is just about as important as anything that we can be involved in. And to everybody that uh, is involved in the cause, uh, congratulations and thanks. Our service is now concluded. Thank you. Have a good evening.